Anytime you do what God does, you will get what God also got. The day you surprise God, that is the day that an end will be seen happening to your history to give you a future that is greater than your history. I pray that your anointing will break through the panels of the screen and touch the people in their different homes, in their different institutions where they are watching us live. name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the power of the Holy Ghost I declare and decree that every man or woman that is tampering with your destiny any man or woman that is tampering with the glory and the virtue of your life wherever they are wherever they are hiding whether you know them or you don't know them whether in your foundation or your ancestral or generational line as i call in the name of the lord today i declare that there's the sword of the law mm, the sword of god's vengeance the sword of god's vengeance in the hand of the angel that excel in, 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 in destructivity that angel that visited egypt and all the house of the cattle they cry because of the death of their first son tonight i declare that the angel of destructivity visit the foundations visit the ancestral and the generational line of your destiny any hand any covenant any wickedness every stronghold holding your destiny i declare by fire let them be cut off i cut them off i cut them off i cut them off i set them on fire i set them on fire i set them on fire every evil hour attacking your destiny every evil hour attacking your husband every evil hour attacking your glory by fire by fire by fire let god arise let god arise we challenge all the armies of hell by the fire of the holy ghost and we send them back to hell as many that are watching me today wherever you are hearing the sound of my voice i prophesy every yoke over your life break 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 by the power of the holy ghost i break the yoke the yoke of sin the yoke of death the yoke of poverty the yoke of stagnancy the yoke of wickedness all the stronghold say you will not move you will not advance by fire let the power of god break them down the yoke breaking anointing cut them down let your life be free i say let your life be free let your destiny be delivered let your life be free let your destiny be delivered by fire by fire by fire by fire by fire lord deliver our destiny by fire lord deliver our destiny by fire lord deliver us from the snare of the flower from their wicked entrapment from satanic hour from evil covenant by fire by fire by fire all their chains i break them all their yoke i break them all their imprisonment i break them all their gate i break them all their chains scatter by fire let them scatter by fire let them scatter
Do you know that God is not a man? God is not a man that he will lie. My brothers and my sisters, wherever you are, wherever you are, I see God fighting your battle. I see God bringing down every wall of Jericho, limiting you from crossing over to the other side. Every wall come down by fire. I speak from the heart of God. Let every yoke, every chain, chains of poverty, chains of lack, chains of wickedness, in the name of Jesus, let them be broken. I stand as an oracle of God. And I decree any man that has taken you to the shrine in the name of Jesus, they sleep and wake up no more. Mando, everyone that has taken your name to the shrine, anyone that has killed a goat, killed a fowl, poured alcohol, that have invoked your name, that have enchanted your name, that have constructed a courtly casket, that have buried your name, your picture, your fingernails, your hair, underneath the ground for your life to become a dry bone of non-entity. My father by fire, my father by fire, by the consuming fire, the liquid fire of the Holy Ghost, wherever they are, I set the fire. Somebody say I collect it. I set the fire on your behalf into the camp, into the house, into the covenant, into the marine war, wherever they are holding you. I command now. Let the yoke break in anointing. Break. Let every yoke holding you, holding your children, holding your health, holding your finance. I command those yoke, no matter how strong they are, by the power, by the power, in the name of Jesus, let them break, break, by fire, break, by fire, break, by fire, break, by fire, break, 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 break. of God, I see the fire of God doing a good work in your life. Your destiny cannot be exchanged. Your destiny cannot be vandalized. Listen to me. We are about to treat a short topic that I titled <laughs> Who tampered with my destiny? Let's take our reading quickly before we pray. From the book of Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35 from verse 15. Please, I want you to post it. Yes, on the screen. You can see it on the screen because of time. I'm going to read. Genesis. Genesis chapter 35 from verse 15, 16, 17, 18 to 20. But let's take 15 and 16. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him for you to be a man, a man that will stop all the destiny robbers, all the destiny wicked men and women tampering with destiny. You must have this first character. Number one, you must be a man that God can talk to and you can talk to God because God knows who are the destiny robbers. Humanly speaking as flesh, we cannot detect them. A lot of them are close to us. A lot of them are our friends. A lot of them are deceptive. But when God speaks to you, he will reveal the deep secret. There are a lot of destiny robbers. A lot of destiny destiny vandalizers that want to tamper with your beautiful destiny. You don't have the all capacity to detect them. You must be a man that have a working relationship with God. Wherein God speak to you and wherein God can hear you and you can hear God. That is what we saw in verse 15. 
<coughs> Listen to this. <coughs> Number two, you must be a man that has an altar. The second thing we see, apart from God speaking to you, you must have a place where you meet with God concurrently and consistently and persistently. You must be that man that has a meeting place with God. Your altar must be alive and burning. Number three, the Bible says, and they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephata. And Rachel, Rachel travailed. She travailed. Watch this. She travailed. She travailed. And she had hard labor. And she had hard labor. Child of God, I want you to hear this. By the covenant that every man that has an altar and has communication with God should have, one of them should not be hard labor. When you see hard labor in the midst of a travail, something is wrong somewhere. So that became a symptom and a sign to isolate, to isolate a destiny vandalizer. One of the signs that you will know when you are hot, burning for God, and you see somebody by your side not getting the blessings from your altar, that is a sign and a symptom that that person is not supposed to be man about you. But let's continue. The Bible said in verse 17, and it came to pass while she was in hard labor, despite everything Jacob did, despite every prayer he prayed, despite every intervention, despite speaking to God, the Bible said she was still in hard labor. I pray for you today. Everyone that is tampering with your beautiful destiny, wherever they are, I place the judgment of hard labor upon them. You didn't hear me. In the name of Jesus, anyone that is tampering with the destiny of your business, tampering with the destiny of your finance, tampering with the future, the future glory of your life, wherever they are, may God give them a trivet with hard labor. Trivet with hard labor. In the name of Jesus, in the day they will trivet with hard labor. In the night they will trivet with hard labor. They shall not be delivered. May God cause them. Everyone that hates you, everyone that tamper with your destiny, in the name of Jesus, may God them in all their doings they will meet hard labor in all their goings they will meet travail those that hate your children those that hate your sources those that hate your essence i declare and i decree let judgment let hard judgment let hard judgment with hard labor come upon their leg come upon their hands come upon their hands in the name of jesus because of time, the Bible says midwives was drafted unto her. The midwife came unto her and said, Fear not, <coughs> fear not from the look of things, thou shalt have this son also. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible said the midwives came. I pray for somebody here today. Anyone that is trying to ignorantly deliver your oppressor in the name of Jesus, may their intervention not be enough to deliver them. You didn't hear me. Anyone that hates you without a cause, hate your sources, hate your children, hate your advancement, no matter where they go, may they not find deliverance. May they not find deliverance. May they not find deliverance. Let the judgment of God multiply. Look at that. The Bible said, despite the intervention of the midwives, these are the midwives that God has a promise over their life. Despite the intervention of the midwife, let's see verse 17 and 18. The Bible now said, despite all their prayers, all their encouragement, to make her know she's about to bring forth a son. But there's something they didn't know about her. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Watch this. When they left her for a while. This, they never knew. That this lady. Before this time. 
Michelle has stolen her father's idol. She was involved in idolism. She was involved in voodoo parties. She was an enchanter. She was carrying out divination. She was a woman that served the devil. They didn't know that she was possessed. And at this time, because of the cause that her father, because of the cause her husband has placed on the head of the person that stole those idols, the cause was about to manifest. Because cause, whenever it has a platform, it must manifest. It is only causes that has no platform that will not find a place of manifestation. But because she was guilty, the guilty of her stealing, of her robbery, created a platform for the manifestation of the cause of the husband and the father. That is death to come. But because Rachel has some spiritual intelligence, the Bible told us she was interacting with the idol, with the shrines, with the with the God and the deities of his father that he stole. And what what did she did as we wound up? The Bible said when she knew that she will die, she now brought out the idols and began to carry out an enchantment and a divination. What was the enchantment? That I don't want to die. I give my son that I'm born. Hey, Kayama Baba. I do. I want you to help me. I want to exchange my son's life to become my own and my dying life to become his own. And she now dedicated that situation and was enchanting my son. You will die in my place. What does that mean? The word die in my place is called Benoni. Are you hearing me? He used the name, that occultic name, Benoni. Benoni. That means you will die in my place. I am not ready to die. The curse my husband laid on me, the curse of Jacob. That is now Israel is so powerful that I will die. I know I will die. But there is something I know. I can exchange my life with somebody so that that person can die for me and I will be alive. She now decided to use the unborn child. She wanted to tamper with the life of the unborn child and sacrifice the boy as she was doing her enchantment. My child, you will carry my you will carry my death, and I will carry your life. Which means Benoni, Benoni, you will be Benoni. Or you carry my death, you will be Benoni. The meaning of Benoni means you will die in my place. Benoni, die in my place. Me, I will live your life. I will live your life. I will not die again. But guess what? Why she was doing that? Why she was doing that? The Bible recorded that Jacob stepped in. Jacob that is now Israel now stepped in. The father now said, what are you doing? You are calling our son Benoni? You are, oh, 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 so you are occultic. You are calling our son. Benoni, why are you doing this? So you are the one that stole the idol of your father. Oh! It became a pain in the heart of Jacob. Jacob was betrayed. Despite the way I love you. Despite the way I cherish you. Oh, you still betrayed me. You stole the idol of your father and you didn't tell me. So you are cultic and you want to tamper with the destiny of our son? I will not allow that to be. He began to beg his husband. I will die. Your husband said, ah, you must die because the son has seen that 
must die. He said, my husband, please, let me use the soul of our son to buy back my life. Let our child die. Let me live. That is the meaning of belonging. And Jacob stood and said, you shall not tamper with the destiny of our son. And that is why, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, I reject Benoni. I call him Benjamin. He shall not die, but he will be the right hand man of the Father. Let's see 19 and 20. 18, 19 and 20. In the book, in this same scripture, in verse 19 and 20, the Bible now told us, that I will tell because Jacob said it shall not be. I stand as a mentor, as the father of this child, and I reject. He shall not be a sacrifice for your life. Immediately Jacob came in. The Bible said, the death, the death that was supposed to come on Benoni didn't see Benoni. Why? Because Jacob has changed the name from Benoni to Benjamin. He said, he shall not be Benoni. I prophesy to somebody sitting, standing, watching, and looking at this program. Every platform of death that your father, that your grandfather, that men or women, every mark of death upon your life, waiting for manifestation by the blood of Jesus, I nullify every covenant, every mark of death and hell. I nullify them by the blood of Jesus. They are nullified. You will not die but live. Anyone that want to tamper with your destiny, may God cut them down. Let their own destiny be tampered by their evil. The Bible now recorded that Amichel died. I want to pray a prayer. I want to pray a prayer. Do you know that he or she that did get a pit, the Bible commands that in that pit they will fall and they will die. I want to pray these two prayer points. Number one, anyone that is standing on their shrine to invoke the spirit of death on your business, on your marriage, spirit of death on your children, spirit of death on your finances, spirit of death on the celebration of your future. And they want to tamper with your destiny with a wicked spirit of death. I prophesy, let that spirit go back to their head. You didn't hear me. I command that spirit of death that is being used to tamper with your destiny. I command the spirit of death and grave and hell back to sender, back to sender, out of your home, out of your life, out of your dream, out of your children, out of your future, out of your ministry, back to sender. Go back to their shrine, take off their head, take off their own children. The Bible said, and Rachel died. It is not a crime to prophesy death on those that expect you to die. Is there anyone that expects you to die? In the name of Jesus, I join my faith with your faith that the spirit of death will not tamper with your life in the name of Jesus. But wherever they are, let the spirit of death eat up their own head. Let death pay them a visit in the day. Let death pay them a visit in the noon. Let the sun smite them by day. Let the sun smite them by noon. Anyone that is invoking the spirit of death against your life, may that same death swallow them up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is invoking death on your business, invoking death on your children, let that death go back to them. Swallow them. Take over them. Crush them. Destroy them. Cut them down. Slaughter them in the name of Jesus. The Bible said to us that it is evil that shall kill the wicked. Everyone that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt utterly condemn. Today in the name of the Lord, 
every spirit of death and hell and grave we command them to die a death of shame in the name of Jesus both the shrine both the altars and their sacrifice and their juju priest and their intention let them be consumed by the fire of God in the name of Jesus wherever you are watching me I cancel every appointment with that you know or you don't know they will not come near thee they will not only with your eyes you will see the downfall of the wicked that seek after your life in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus much less name we pray amen I pray for you wherever you are watching me from I want you to take up a seed of life for your business take up a seed a seed of life for your children take up a seed an offering of life for your future and destiny as I pray you are going to see the details of our offering at the base of the TV screen please I am just led by the spirit for you to do this wherever you are watching me from pick up a seed of life it does not matter wherever you are watching me from take a seed a seed a seed of life on behalf of your children on behalf of your business as I pray our Heavenly Father as we have taken up a seed a seed of life for our destiny a seed of life for our children a seed Lord I declare for our ministry everything that was intended to die before as we sow this seed we declare may they never become Benoni may they become Benjamin let them have life instead of death in Jesus name we pray Amen thank you father for in Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. Anytime you do what God does, you will get what God also got. The day you surprise God that is the day that an end will be seen happening to your history to give you a future that is greater than your history I pray that your anointing will break through the panels of the screen and touch the people in their different homes in their different institutions where they are watching us live <laughs>